I always thought of myself as someone who was more than their art. But lately, I've been having a hard time watching the critics slowly tear my stories apart and then go about judging the sharpness of every shattered fragment of my heart. Like, oh, he, he rhymes too much, he sounds too urban, his words aren't big enough, he's a little too cliche. So as my voice shakes, I'm reminded about how far from groundbreaking we really are. That I'm but a hairline fracture in terms of impact on this world with what I do. That rhyming words and saving kids is nothing different, it's nothing new. See, I get it. For someone who's so familiar with the feeling of never being enough, I should have known better than to depend on this. I don't remember the reason why I picked up a pen in the first place, and now that a day goes by where I don't feel like I should quit. But they told me to go back to the beginning. So, grade four, I wrote my first poem to my Valentine's Day crush. I folded it in an envelope in a shiny red bag with a teddy bear plush toy, and I watched as she crumpled up the poem and laughed with her friends and tossed the gift down to my feet. Ten years later, my mother tells me that that night, when I was asleep, she stuck it to my room and made a copy and put it into a scrapbook with a message she wrote, Patrick, your words will always be great, but it is your actions that will define you most. And I remember one of the first spoken word workshops that I taught in the school, this grade 12 ESL student asked if, I, asked if I could stay late in the classroom, and so I did. I watched as she struggled with limited English vocabulary and so much more as she tells me that she was gay, that she's never told anyone before, and though we've never met, for some reason she felt like I knew the right way to help her put words together that could properly capture what she wanted to say to her two Chinese immigrant parents. You know what? The raw and honest masterpiece that we created after was not even the best part. The second half of the day was a showcase in front of high schools all across the region. In the middle of hosting the event, she tugs at my t-shirt and says, Patrick, I want to read it. And I'm like, you don't have to. And she says, isn't this the point of saying it out loud to make sure kids just like me hear it? And just like that, hands and knees shaking, young poet comes out of the closet in front of hundreds of kids her age. After a brief moment in the silence, the auditorium erupts with crying students and teachers on their feet applauding, only wishing they could be as brave. So maybe I will never create a Beethoven's Fifth Symphony of my own. Maybe Jenny's piece about coming out of the closet will be my greatest poem. Maybe Jeffrey's letter to his absent father will be my greatest mural painting. And Jessica's short story about her life in a wheelchair will be my statue of David in my Sistine Chapel. The masterpiece that I would create was it all happened at the same time, on the same mic, in the same damn place. So don't just judge me based on the sound of my gift, but what I choose to do with it. My words might not be poetic enough to make you question life itself, but they're real enough to make you question the way you choose to live it. Know me not as an artist, but a messenger who uses art for so much more. In which case, I would be so honored if you were to say that you've heard this all before.